Hey guys, Chris here from thattutorguy.com and I just wanted to make a video for you that sort of tells an inspirational story for how right-brained people can sort of master math and science. And this is the story of a particular student I had who is by far the most right-brained person I've ever met. High school student, but like, you know, really good vocabulary, really good language skills, really convincing, really clever. You start meeting like, this is a really intelligent person, like why, why is she having trouble in math and science? And then we start working on it and you start to see why. Math, it wasn't that she was dyslexic, just math did not make sense to her. If you're someone who has really strong language skills and is under, you know, understands people really well and is a good social person and all that, all that stuff is sort of like fuzzy, whereas math is really black and white and it's just a bunch of terms and there's no tone, there's no you know, inflections, it's just, some numbers and some X's, and can you do a series of steps on them? And for math people, that kind of comes naturally. For a math person, you explain to them, you know, the teacher, there's a lecture, they read an example in the book, they watch a video online, and they're like, oh, okay, so on this one, I just take the function, I factor out the X's, and da 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 there's the answer. So for them, it's like, they sort of are very good at categorizing different types of problems, and then sort of seeing what the steps are, and sort of organizing everything in their minds. But for not math people, for right brain people, it's sort of the opposite. They sort of feel like they should be able to look at a problem and sort of like, hmm, feel like intuitively like a spider sense, like what needs to be done in this problem. They don't realize how organized and like just boring a math person thinks about math. It's not like math people are magicians who just look at something and just sort of feel their way through the problem. They know that there's 10 types of problems on this test they pretty much memorize the steps for how to do all 10 types of problems. So they're like, whatever, they look at a problem, they know which steps to do. Um, so the big fix that I discovered with this one student who's right-brained is to do cookbooks. And in a minute, I'll get in, in another video actually, I'll get into um, why I'm holding blue paper and not white paper and why it's legal size and what to put in this cookbook. But I want to tell you her story because she is someone who was super right-brained, really strong in language, really strong in history, and just couldn't get her head around math and we were able to figure out this technique to take all those verbal skills and like focus that fire on math and science and just get through it. And she's, you know, if you're a right brain person, you're probably never gonna love math. You're never gonna go out of your way to take an extra math class like, oh, my requirements only make me go through pre-calculus, but you know what, I'll throw some calculus and stats on there just because I'm interested, you know? That's not going to happen probably, but what we can do and what you can do with sort of turning your skills into cookbooks, your verbal skills, is to, um, to get through the classes you need to get through with a good enough grade that you graduate, get the degree you need. Maybe you want to go to grad school. You, know, you want to get an MBA and you've got really strong, most of your you know, transcript is really strong, but oops, there's like some C's in math. Like that's not good for getting an MBA. So we want to use cookbooks and your right brain skills to get B's in math so that you can get through it and not have to spend the next two years like just freaking out about math. Um, so, what is a cookbook? You're basically gonna take your verbal skills, you'll take each type of problem, and you'll write down all the steps of how to do that problem in your own words. Take your method of describing what the steps would be for that problem, write them down on paper, because if you're a verbal person, you can memorize stuff on paper, you can read stuff on paper and sort of like put it away and use it, you know, for later. So use that um, to your advantage. All right, so for more on cookbooks, because I believe me, I just scratched the surface on how to use cookbooks. I could go on and on, they're wonderful. And I do in another video about how to do cookbooks. And that's on my website, thattutorguy.com slash study tips. And also on that website, you can find lots of great videos on actually how to do all these math problems step by step, no matter which math class you're in. We got videos covering every single topic and I can't, I don't have cookbooks on the site for you because it needs to be in your words, not mine. It's different for every student. But the videos are sort of organized that way. That's how I teach math. That's how I tutor math, is to put things in more like down-to-earth terms that anybody can understand, not just math people. And um, the study tips videos have lots of tricks on cookbooks and other things. So check it out.